Well, hello and welcome to tutorial 113 in this series of programs and tutorials on the subject of TradeStation Easy Language. If you're not familiar with my website, then please go to markplex.com and you're going to find a lot of uh, additional tutorials and programs there. So in today's tutorial, which is tutorial 113, what I'm going to do is just demonstrate how simple it is to use values stored in an Excel spreadsheet, as you can see here in G and H1 respectively, and use those parameters to be inputs into a trade station program. So what I'm going to do is just explain what we're what we what we're seeing here and then I'm going to go through the program and try and explain that. Incidentally, this program is going to be using the the Excel uh, the um, Microsoft Excel objects, also going to be using drawing objects and also the charting host. So let me just explain what we're seeing here at the moment. So I've got um, a moving average applied, which is this yellow line here and that's set at 100. But what I've got also doing is plotting two moving averages and you can see here that this one just jumped and these two are getting their values from a spreadsheet. In other words, the length of the moving average is in the spreadsheet. So for example, this one here is currently set at 50. What I'm gonna do is change it back to, or change it to 100 and uh, we'll see what happens. So I'm just gonna go 100 return and you'll see a few things happen first of all the uh, moving average returns to the yellow line which you may remember that's the moving average that we've got plotted on the chart also you'll see that that hundred appears here as a text object and also here that's essentially what the program does let me just go back and change it again to another value and uh, let me just uh, change it back to 50 for example so I'm going to go 50 return and what you'll see again that's 50 that's 50 and you'll see that the the moving average has changed again so the whole purpose of this is really just to demonstrate how information on an excel spreadsheet can be communicated with tradestation incidentally this program you're welcome to copy it and use it and experiment with it if you wish you can download it for a small fee and also i'm going to make this available at no cost zero cost for gold pass members okay so let's uh, go ahead and have a look at the program and I'm not going to type this all in because it just takes too long and I just want to get the basics over to you if you wish to develop it from scratch which is probably not a bad idea one of the things you can do for example when we're talking about charting host if you double click on charting host and then go to properties and what you can do click here on events and then by just double clicking here you'll see a lot of the syntax that we're going to be using so we're not gonna be doing that because I've already input it in the program. So I'm just gonna delete that. And uh, very important with this program, if you do create or you need to create an Excel spreadsheet, make sure you input the position or where it is on your computer, otherwise you'll get an error. Okay, so let's go through the program. Now, the first thing that happens is we have a a method that gets called when easy language or when the program is first applied and first starts and what we're going to do is use that to create and initialize the components so we're going to be creating the workbook and the trade the excel spreadsheet within easy language and that's all in this area here again if you wanted to see what the syntax is you would double click here and then you'd see a lot of the same same pro, same code in the designer generated code but i'm just going to do an overview here we're also going to be using a timer and the reason for that we're going to be checking the spreadsheet every so often the moment i've got the interval set to one second a thousand milliseconds but uh, you could change that and then we've got an event a timer event and what this occurs every time that thousand milliseconds is elapsed and then we've got the charting host and it, this is just as i was just demonstrating a few moments ago that uh, the syntax here sets the uh, creates the object and also sets up some of the events that we're going to be using and the two events we're going to be using on this are the on initial update and on size so just to uh, just to show you again if we were to do that within the easy to do way we click that 
Then we go to properties and we do on initial update. So just double click on that and I think it was on size. Okay, and then you'd see the, the syntax for those events. And also if you went to look at the designer generated code, you'd see the syntax in, in terms of creating the object and setting up the events. So we're not going to be doing that. I'm just showing you how you could get that to save yourself some time inputting this code. Okay, so that is the, the spreadsheet, the timer and the charting host. So let's go through program and we're going to be using, well, first of all, uh, when the charting host, when the, the size changes, what we, what you probably noticed in the program is we've got a couple of text objects here. And what we're saying in this part of the program is if the charting host changes size, then we're just going to reposition those text objects and, uh, and so on. So for example, let me just do that. I'm just going to move it across and you'll see that these are just repositioned. So the next thing is when the, uh, the initial update of the charting host, and that is where we're going to be drawing the text. So we're going to be creating text labels and we need to specify a position. And what I've done is just said the, uh, the position is args.width. That is the width of the, of the, uh, of the window. So minus 150 and args uh, width minus 150. And then the height, I've just said the args.height and I multiplied that by 0.1 and 0.15. Now, in terms of the value of the text label, we're getting that from the spreadsheet. And the way we do that is we use WB sheet one dot, and then we get it using cell as W as double. And then we specify the position. So seven and one, eight and one. If we go back to the spreadsheet, you'll see that A is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and H is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And of course the row is one. So that is how we get those values. We, we need to make the text persist so that it stays there after the next tick. We're setting up the, uh, the font. So I've set it up as uh, Arial and the size 24. And then we need to add the text to the chart. So that happens on initial update, but every time the timer object expires, in other words, every second, we need to do a couple of things. We need to find out if the value in the cell has changed. Now the cell that I'm looking at is this one here. I'm not, uh, I'm not querying this cell, just using this one for example, but I'm sure you could work out how to check if uh, H has changed as well. The way it works is we're checking last cell val. Now you may be wondering what that is. Well, lower down in the method we're storing in last cell val, the current value of that particular cell from the spreadsheet. And I've also made last cell val an intrabar persist variable because this could all happen within the bar. And we need to see if it's changed within the bar. So we're saying if the value has changed from the last time, if last cell val is different from the value currently stored in 71, which is this one here, then if it does, we're going to print value and uh, you'll see here we've got a print statement. It's not super important that, but if it has, what we're going to do is draw another text object on the, the chart and we're going to draw that at the bar where it changed. So you may have noticed that here we changed it to a hundred and you can see that the text object there and here we changed it back to 50. You can see the text object there. So that just gives you an idea of what the current value of that moving average is. Now you'll notice one of the things that we need to do for BN point, it's not just the, uh, the current bar, we need to add the max bars back and subtract one. And the, the place where I'm putting it is the low value of the bar. So again, if you look at the bars, you'll see that that's positioned at the low value, value of each bar, just uh, it's fairly arbitrary, but I just thought that was an easy place to put it. And then we're still, again, numbered string. We're taking this value from the spreadsheet and we're, we're 
actually showing that on the chart. Again, we want this thing to persist because uh, this may occur within a bar and we need to add it to chart. Now also, this may not occur when a new tick has occurred. It may just occur when the time has elapsed. So we need to recalculate the averages using the values in the spreadsheet and plot the values. And then what we also need to do is update text one and text two. And uh, you'll see those are the values that we have appearing up here. So when I change value in the spreadsheet, it's gonna change it back to 100. You'll see that straight away that becomes 100. And then we get 100 plotted here. And then the plot goes back up to the uh, the plot that we have. Oh, that's not the right one. The plot that we have plotted on the chart, which is uh, length 100. Okay, so we already uh, said we store the last cell val into this variable here, which is an intrabar persist variable. And the last thing we need to do is on each tick of the chart, we need to recalculate the average both values stored in the spreadsheet and we need to plot those values so this is basically a very simple demonstration of using values from a spreadsheet in a program it also shows you how to set up the workbook how to set up the timer and use the timer and how to use charting hosts and again if any of those are a mystery to you you can Get rid of the mystery by clicking on the toolbox and then you've got the timer you can go on to properties and you can set up elapsed events like so just double click and you'll see that the uh, the syntax appropriate syntax appears here in the program and uh, what you can also do is having done that you can go to the designer generated code you can copy that into the actual program. So again, we didn't use that in this particular case, but uh, that's what you could do to help understand it more. So again, you're very welcome to copy this program and use it, experiment with it. If you're a, uh, a Gold Pass member, you can download it for free. And uh, if you wanna save yourself some typing, you can get it for a small cost at the website markplex.com. So thank you very much for your attention. I hope you found this useful.